We're going to go ahead and look at graphing functions and equations today. Now, making a t-chart will always work, but sometimes there are shortcut methods for different functions or equations you, you come across. So, a t-chart, once again, will always work. You just choose some values for x, plug those in for x to figure out y, so plug in negative 2 here, times by 3, add 2, plug in 0, times it by 3, add 2, plug in 1, times it by 3, add 2, then you can go ahead and plot those points, and this will always work. 2 to the left, 4 down, 0 left and right, 2 up. 1 right and up 5. Now, a second way you could have done it, since this is a line, is you could have looked at the idea of your slope and your y-intercept. It's in the form of y equals mx plus b. So when y is by itself, m is what's in front of your x. And your b, your y-intercept, is what's being added to your x. Now remember, slope is rise over run, so that means up 3 over 1, or down 3, left 1, which would be a negative 3 over a negative 1 that still ends up being positive. If you use that approach, well, you'd start out at your y-intercept, which is here. Then if you went up 3 over 1, that would be here. Or if you went down 3, left 1, down 3, left 1, that would be here, or down 3, left 1 again. So you can see that no matter which approach or method you use, you end up getting the same line. So looking at this one here, this one here is not a line, so we're going to want to choose multiple points to help us out here. So I'm going to just choose some values for x. So I'll plug in negative 3, negative 3 cubed times a half. Plug in negative 2, negative 2 cubed times a half. Plug in negative 1, negative 1 cubed times a half. Plug in 0, 0 cubed times a half, and so on. By the way, if you wanted to, you could have your calculator make this t-chart for you. You go to your y equals, go 1 half x cubed. Then you would go second window, which is your table set. Start your table at negative 3. Your delta table should be at 1. And then you can go second graph. And then your graphing calculator would give you this table. So if you plot these points, some of these don't end up being on our graph because it doesn't go up and down to negative 13. So this one here, left 2, down 4. This one here, left one, down a half. Then it goes through the origin. Then it goes right one, up a half. Goes over two, up four. And then this other one is off of our graph again. So if you would connect these, and we know it should not be a line, and we can see that they're not all on a line, we would end up getting this shape right here. So we also have a circle. A circle has its center of hk. So this is the standard equation of a circle. So what's being subtracted to x is h. What's being subtracted to y is k. Or another way you can think of it is h is the opposite of what's in the parentheses after the x. k is the opposite of what's after the parentheses in the y. And then r squared is over here. So here is our equation. I don't know why I had that covered up. So your center is the opposite of what's after the x and the opposite of what's after the y. So you'd want to plot your center over 4 down 2. Now r squared is what's over here on the right. So this is r squared. So 4 is equal to r squared and I would encourage you to go r squared is equal to 4. Now we can actually go ahead and take the square root of both sides to get your radius and we get 2. So I would go ahead and go to my center, which I have over here, put a point to the right, put a point to down, put a point to the left, put a point to up. Then I would do a rough sketch of a circle going in between all those, and we would get this shape here. So here is also the equation of a circle. 
So the first thing you need to do is to get it into this proper form right here. So we do have to go ahead and complete the square root of the x's and complete the square root of the y's. Remember, in completing the square, you want to have a 1 in front of your squared term. So to get a 1 in front of our squared terms here, we'd have to go ahead and divide everything by 9. Each term on both sides have to be divided by 9. Well, if I do that, I get this blue. Now, to complete the square, you're going to want to group your x's together. So I'm going to put the two purples together. Plus, I'm going to group the y's together. And then, this doesn't have any x's or y's. I want to take that to the other side by subtracting it. Now, remember, in completing the square, you have to take half of this and square it. Well, half of this, 4 thirds times a half, is 2 thirds. Now, if I add it on the left side, I'd also have to add it on the right side. And 2 thirds squared, when you square the top and the bottom, is 4 ninths. Same idea here. I'd have to go ahead and take half of this, 2 thirds times 1 over 2, would be 2 over 6 or 1 third. So I've got to go 1 third squared here, and if I add it on the left, I've got to add it on the right. Now remember, in completing the square, this will factor into two identical parentheses, so you can write it as 1 parenthesis all squared. What's in the beginning being squared? An x, so I'll put an x here. You take your first sign, you ask yourself, what's being squared here, which is 2 thirds? So we'll put that down. Then we'll do the same idea for the y's. Also factors into two identical parentheses, so we can write it as one parenthesis all squared. What's in the beginning being squared? What's the y? Take your first sign. What's in the end that's being squared is one third. And then over here, you can see your four ninths and your negative four ninths cancel, so we'd be left with just one ninth. So your center is the opposite of what's after the x, opposite of what's after the y, and remember that this over here is not your radius. This is r squared, so go r squared equals 1 ninth. When you solve that for r, you know that you take the square to the top, or the square to the bottom, you get 1 third. So now, in this particular problem, you want to find the equations for your upper half, your lower half, your left half, and your right half. Upper and lower half, up and down, is y. So basically, we want to take this equation and solve it for y. If we do that down here, we'd have to get rid of the x's, so I'm going to subtract that to the other side. And then I'd have to go ahead and take my square root to get y totally by itself. So remember, you get plus or minus. Now your upper half goes up, which is in the positive direction of the y, so your upper half is your positive square root. Your lower half going which goes down and y goes down is negative that would be your negative root now if you want your left and your right half that means x goes left and right we got to get x by itself to get x by itself right here i'd want to take my y squared to the other side and that's what you can see here i had subtracted y squared then to try to get x by itself, I could undo my squaring by taking the square root of both sides. Then I got to finish getting x by itself by subtracting 3 away from my x. Now, I'm looking for left and right. Right goes in the positive direction of the x's, so that's going to be the positive root, so it's going to be negative 3 plus our root. Left is going in the negative direction of the axis, so that's the negative root, so negative 3 minus our root. So just be aware of that. Now, as a side note, if you were going back to this problem and completing the square, and you ended up getting this over here to be a certain number, that's what we're going to talk about here. If that number is positive, well, that's fine. We can work that out. We know we've done that before. We can actually get circles. If that number on the right-hand side of r squared is equal to 0, well, then there's no radius, and it's really just our center point. If that r squared on the right-hand side ends up being negative, well, we know on the left side it's something squared plus something squared. We can't add things together to get a negative, so that's no solution.